I was asked to participate in an art show, art event, that was called the Wear and Tear event. And the five artists involved all had to come up with a, a wearable piece of art. So I decided to do a costume. This is my daughter, Zena, who's an acrobat, and she agreed to be my model for this crab monster. So I started off making a, a pair of quick uh, mechanical claws for her. Uh, just so that I could start guesstimating what all this foam was going to be turned into. Uh, the proportions on this are very strange, and my concept was that it, was a, it would be an art piece that would be folded up and be boring and brown and lackluster on the outside, and then unfold and open up into something much more colorful. The basic forms were all created out of polyfoam and you can see I used all sorts of scraps on this and it was an interesting project simply because I had to build this on Xena because of the movement because of folding up and opening up I couldn't do it on a mannequin I had to do it on something that was movable that I could check the sizes and make adjustments on on a continual basis and that was Xena <laughs> And she was great, she was fantastic. She would come over whenever she could and we'd do a, a fitting here and a fitting there and a trim here and a, a rework there. And it went really well. But it was an incremental process. Here I did the tails out of EVA foam and uh, came up with some techniques for uh, adding texture with heat and tools and texture pads, which worked well. But it was uh, a process that demanded a few new techniques. I used some neoprene from Faust and Company and c came up with some new textures with it. Basically, this is a texture test I did with some styrofoam balls, some styrofoam, some polyfoam shreds. Uh, cotton batting and this liquid neoprene applied on top and then sculpted into the textures you see here. This is the back of the shell. Very, very happy with it. Extremely light and easy to wear. Uh, my daughter Zena has worn quite a number of the costumes I've made over the years and she said this was by far the lightest and most comfortable. So I, did, I just continued that texture all over the exterior the interior surfaces wound up being much smoother and more delicate for two reasons. One, I just wanted the contrast, but uh, two, I really wanted a, a, an easier surface to do a more elaborate paint job on. And here you can see us, <laughs> Zena, uh, just having a blast uh, trying this stuff on. The head wound up being pretty challenging uh, in terms of it being able to be as movable as it needed to be uh, going from the closed to the open position and then also being large enough to close up the, the space and mobile enough to be balanced on Zena's head. The mouth opens and closes and I wound up adding a lot of mandibles and feelers and everything else just to give it a bizarre, alien, crabby uh, feel. And this also was all built up with polyfoam and um, cotton batting and, and the neoprene. And one of the textures I, I, I wanted to shoot for on this was that crustacean-y kind of prickly a uh, hard surface and that was done while the cotton batting was still wet with a neoprene and I went over it with a, uh, a sculpting needle and sort of picked it up and but added to that later as you can see here with additional foam and cotton batting uh, cotton just regular cotton material uh, with the neoprene and and the head just kept growing and growing the legs were a, a lot easier. These are basically pool noodles with added foam on top. Uh, one of the nice things about working with the Creature Cast 
neoprene is that it comes in different densities so I could make the rigid sections of the le legs quite firm and yet still do the joints as very flexible and that worked out extremely well some of the feelers were all done with EVA foam again and here you can see most of the appendages uh, fixed up the, the suit originally had eight legs and they worked well they moved well at first and we had them operating really nicely the problem with a costume like this is that you make one little change in it and everything else shifts quite a bit and so it got to the point where we Xena just couldn't get the legs to close up properly and so I had to do quite a bit of work uh, reworking the legs removing two legs but also gluing them all together attaching them to the shoes she was going to wear so they moved much better here you see them before they're attached still wobbling around a bit But we were getting closer and closer to that illusion of her, of Xena being able to really close this thing up so that it looked like it was a sealed, organic thing before opening up. And we tried, we worked quite a bit on the movement because the costume, is, although light and comfortable, it was restricted in some ways. There were certain things Xena couldn't do. And then came time to paint. I mixed my own paints uh, out of some uh, elastomers, uh, which are very, very tough because I knew this suit was going to get a lot of work. The exterior surfaces, the, in the closed position, I, I went with sort of just muddy browns and crusty looking uh, colors and textures. And that all, I was very, very happy with that. It had that sort of nondescript generic look to it all and then I really had fun going wild on the inner surfaces you can see multi colors very bright very uh, startling in contrast to the exterior surfaces and that was exactly what I wanted that was the, exactly the effect I wanted with the color scheme and it was quite a challenge getting in between all these feelers all these claws to get uh, paint on all the surfaces I needed to paint. The underside of the body was very easy to paint, very, uh, very much fun in that I started with pastel colors and then drew stark contrast with black, which is really was really great, very very uh, strong impression. And once it was all finished, it went to the art show where it was a, a big success. Here's some of the last shots we did just before heading to the show. We did some last minute uh, movement decisions on not just what looked good, because there was a lot of stuff that looked good, but there were a lot of moves that were just too demanding for you know 20 minute performances you know for for 20 minute performances for the show so we came up with some moves that were very comfortable for Xena but still looked good with the suit and Xena's a natural performer I was so happy with what she did with the suit and at the art show, it was a real success. People just were flabbergasted and loved it, and it had just the right effect. One of the nice things about the show was that each individual artist had to walk around the gallery. So there was a lot of interaction with the patrons of the show, and they just loved it, and Xena played to the crowd very, very well. I was so happy with the costume, I couldn't even say. It was a lot of work and I learned a lot, but definitely, definitely worth the effort. 
So I named it Kanira, which is the combination of Kani in Japanese for crab and the addition of Ra, which is typical of a lot of the Mothra, Ibira, uh, Kaiju monsters. <laughs> 